the well. She turned right and slowed as she passed her party's leadership table. Wonderful job, Jamie, she said with false sincerity. She stopped in front of the senior senator from Illinois and bent forth with a congenial smile on her face. She said, get your shit together, Dickie. You're an embarrassing all of us. Lonsdale left the floor and entered the cloakroom. Two of her staffers uh, were waiting for her, a man and a woman, or, or more accurately, a boy and a girl. The girl had her burgundy leather and briefing folk clutched tight against her perky breast and was wearing a short sleeve ivory cashmere sweat. Lonsdale suddenly resisted the woman's youth. That and the fact that she was pissed about losing the vote caused her to ask a bit impatient, what now? The woman in her early 20s tilted her brief and folded the floor and scanned her notes. You have a photo opportunity with the Pipe Fitters Union. Lonsdale listened to her age, spoke excitedly about the day's remaining events. It was an entirely boring and lit, and she unfortunately had no choice but to attend each and every one. The, the boy stepped forward. His name was Trent or Trevor or something like that. Uh, Wade Clown is waiting for you in, the, in your office. Which one? Lonsdale asked, trying to sound uninterested upstairs, as the senior female senator in our party. Lonsdale had an office in the Capitol as well as her larger one in the Durskin Senate office building. Did he say what he wants? No. Without wasting another moment, she turned and left the cloakroom. She took one step towards the stairs and then headed for the elevator. Her heart was beating fast enough over the prospect of seeing her favorite Justice Department employee. She didn't want to show up flushed and out of breath, Paula or Pastel or Pearl or whatever. 